Hello. 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 Is anybody out there? Well, we have no idea. But I'm Danny Gregory, <laughs> and uh, I'm joined by Nikki Trakos. Hello. Hey, Danny. So we are embarking on... Oh, good. I'm getting messages in here. Okay, great. Whew. All right. So today is um, the beginning of Creative Kickstart Week, sponsored um, by Winsor & Newton. And um, I can, in fact, put that up here. Sponsored by Winsor & Newton. And we are going to be each day doing some kind of an experiment using this goodie box that we got um, last a couple of weeks ago, actually. And you are welcome to join us in experimenting. So we're going to there's, there's a lot of experiments going on here, right? It's, <laughs> it's, we are doing a live stream from with two countries. I hadn't even thought of that. We're doing an international yeah. live stream because Nikki is in, in Canada and I'm in the United States. And then we are streaming from our different places to our different channels. So some of you are on the Sketchbook School channel and some of you are on the Nikki's channel, right? So, um, we thought it would be nice to start by introducing ourselves to each other's audiences. So, Nikki, why don't you begin? Sure. Um, well, first of all, welcome, everyone. I can see the chat, Danny, which is really exciting. Great. Okay, um, cool. And thank you for organizing this because I think most people don't get how much technology and wizardry goes behind making sure that this all works. So you, um, I'm in awe by your talent and your skills. So everyone who it's my nerd maybe, nerdery actually, but yes. <laughs> Um, everyone in my creative community who is joining me on this great collab with Danny in this creative week, uh, welcome. You're in for a treat. I think we are in for a treat as well. We're hoping to have a lot of room to play and be creative this week. Um, if you haven't met Danny Gregory, he is crazy talented. We've had an opportunity to really get to know each other over these last few months. And every time Danny shares his sketchbook spreads with me, I'm in awe by his use of color. His style just comes across so organically. You can instantly tell um, his personality and his sketches and even just the, the way that he creates his illustrations and use of color, I think is going to be really inspiring for you this week. Um, he is the author of 13 books. That's amazing. Um, and run sketchbook school where he has just thousands of hours of content where you can embrace being creative and having play and being exposed to different mediums in different ways of working your sketchbook. So I'm really excited to be working alongside with Danny and um, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to confess because we're doing this live. And of course, whenever you're working next to someone, we often have this um, maybe fear of making sure that we can keep up or pleased with our end product. So we may even talk about that a little bit. So thank you, Danny, for having me. I'm excited about this week. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, so Nikki is, Nikki is uh, as I said, she's Canadian, but she is an artist. She is also an author. Here's her new book, Watercolor Made Simple. I love this book. And it has, it has so many interesting things in it, but it also has a really cool feature that is more techy than I've ever managed to be, um, which is that you can, um, where is it? You can find little um, videos in the book. So when you, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a, a QR code printed onto the pages of the demos. So you can click on it and you can watch a video of it, which is really amazing um, because books don't move, you know, stupid books. Anyway, um, so Nikki and I, started talking about how we could do a collaboration and we talked about different ways of doing it and what we both we kind of were having this conversation around the fact that uh, I think we started talking about this in December but we were saying it's like the end of the year and we're getting into um, you know some uh, just an opportunity a time to think afresh and yeah. Nikki we're feeling Nikki, a yeah. little bit right getting double audio yeah. Okay. Getting double audio. We don't have audio? 
And we're getting double audio. Oh. That's more audio than people want. Yeah. Uh, JJ, if you can hear this, you can tell me if it's changed. I don't know. Anyway, let's carry on. Hopefully it will okay. be fixed. Um, and I, by the way, JJ, I can see messages, so but I haven't seen anything about that yet. So, um, yes, so Nikki is a, a watercolorist and also um, a calligrapher. There's lettering in, uh, in both. Yeah, everybody seems to be fine now. Okay, um, so I, I think in general, Nikki, when I look at your work, it's so much more perfect than mine. Mine is always... It's still doubled up. It's like playing the beginning again. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Uh, Nikki, can you vamp for a second while I talk to Jay? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I think um, Danny and I, through our conversations, agree that, you know, looking side by side, our styles are so different that it'll be interesting to see how much overlap there is, how maybe I'll be inspired by Danny's use of color. And maybe Danny will bring in a little bit more of my watercolor technique. So we're really curious to see how we'll influence each other while working on similar photo references, or maybe we'll tweak them to personalize them. Absolutely. By the way, the audio problem, it turned out that JJ was watching both of our channels at the same time. <laughs> she, she can't get <laughs> enough. Can't get enough creative kickstart. So don't watch both of our channels at the same time. All right. Um, so good. So, so, over the course of the week, we are going to experiment in different ways with different things. We've talked a fair amount over the last month or so about what we're going to do, but we've also decided to leave a lot of latitude, a lot of room for experimentation and learning from each other and trying like that. So I hope that you will be you will enter this with the same uh, spirit as we have, which is to say, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how it's going to work, but that's the kind of the point because i think if we emerge from this kind of doing the same stuff that we did when we entered it you know then it'll have been a not as successful an experiment but um and we're working with materials that are somewhat familiar but also there are aspects of them that are less familiar um that's kind of what we asked windsor newton to do is we said just send us a bunch of stuff and like we'll try and figure out how to use it in new and different ways or if we've never used it before We'll figure out how to how we think it works, and uh, teach each other that too. So there's going to be, and hopefully the technology will, support, will not be too much of an experiment either. But again, as I said from the beginning, it's a bit of a high wire act. We'll see. So good. Um, <laughs> yes. So I thought like we so we each of us made an unboxing video where we mm -hmm. talked about the stuff that they sent us. And mm -hmm. we thought we would just kind of go through that again and just talk a bit about it. So why don't I, I'm going to go to my desk here, which is here, which is kind of a mess. And um, I'll just put some stuff up and we can just quickly talk about, about it. So here's the, here's the thing I, one of the things I love, which is these um, drawing inks. So Windsor and Newton sent us this box of drawing inks. And, and Danny, I love how you put your swatches on top of the bottles because I'm a big believer in swatching, but that's great. So you can see exactly what the color looks like. You don't have to look for your swatch cards. I love that. Yeah. Good tip. I have, I have little carts that I have all my art supplies on that I can roll in and out. And yeah. my inks are all on the second level of the cart. So I'm kind of like reaching into the darkness to find the ones. And this way you just grab it and you know, okay, that's black. Yeah. Yeah, Save so the time and you're organized. Love it. Great yeah, tip. It's, it, it's more organized than I usually am, but it's it's nice. So have you used these drawing inks before? I have. So yeah. I've used them to um, accentuate some more of just my ink drawings, and especially as I'm playing with portraits more so, um, and also with my dip pen. Yeah. Yeah, they are cool. Really I mean, really this is my swatch of them. Yeah. And you can see, like, the colors are just, I think, gorgeous colors. Like, they're... How would you compare them with watercolors? Should I? Um, I use them sometimes instead of watercolor. Let me share my desk with you as well, because I think it's really interesting to see. Acrylics. We're not using acrylics. We're using, yeah. Okay, we're not using acrylics. Yes, carry on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No worries. Can you see my um, desk now? 
Yes, there you go. Perfect. So, it, you know, it's interesting to see again between artists how you swatch and how you test your um, colors out too, because there's my inks next to my calligraphy. So the drawing ink swatches. I tried to pick the blue. And of course, if you're a part of my community, you know, blues and greens are my favorite, but that's the calligraphy ink on watercolor paper. And here are the drawing inks there. So I like to kind of see what they look like on different papers. And then here they are again, you know, on just drawing paper that I have in my sketchbook here. So yeah, I would use inks in lieu of um, watercolor and use them as like a really nice, bold, expressive hit of color if you're using inks and working on some illustrations. Yeah, I agree. I mean, what I like about them also is that, that there are times when you might want to do some lettering or you mm -hmm. might want to draw some line. And it's really pretty hard to draw lines with watercolor. Even if you have a dip pen, you could theoretically do it. But with drawing ink, you can. So you can you can, you can do the drawing with a dip pen and then you can use a brush with the exact same color. And so you get, you know, a different thing. But but they're also, as you say, they're they're they are not water based, right? So they don't. Yeah, so the um, ink itself. So the drawing inks um, are have shellac in them. Right. So the one thing I know is, is you want to rinse your brushes off if you're using your watercolor brushes. So make sure you wash right. the brushes really well. Um, and the calligraphy inks are water based. And again, the pigment payoff is they're both really high. So they're very concentrated. So even play around with watering them down a bit if you want a bit of a wash and then you can work wet on wet. So I do use them similarly to how I use watercolor for sure. Right. Don't put this them in a fountain pen. pen. I mean, they'll ruin your fountain pen because they have shellac in them. So, so make sure you just rinse it. Yeah. But even a fountain, I mean, a dip pen is fine, but not a fountain pen. Oh, not a fountain pen. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't put it in there. And actually the calligraphy inks are water-based and theoretically you can, but I think you're not supposed to put them in a fountain pen either. So, yeah, I wouldn't. Right. I wouldn't chance it. I would buy ink designed for a for, fountain pen, just right. which yeah, won't be water. I mean, tool, right? So right. we want to take care of it for sure. Should yeah. we show them the metallics that we're going to use today? Because I think yeah. those are um, yes. So then we have this set of these are metallic watercolors, Cotman metallic watercolors. So this is a new thing for both of us. We both played around with it a little bit. I've yeah. tried them a few times. I've never really gotten that serious about them. But today I decided this morning I was playing around with them a bit more. And um, I started playing out, playing around with them in this way. So what I did is I, I this is what they look like on, on just white paper. You know, and they are metallic. So you can see that they have a little bit of shine and sheen to them. Look at that silver. Um, and so I've done things like robots and coins and metals and things like that. All stuff that was metal. But I think I can be more imaginative than that. So I want to definitely push myself with, with that today. And what I did here is I thought they look really awesome on black. Yeah, I love So them I put on down black. a little swatch of drawing ink, one of calligraphy ink, and one of gouache. And then I try them out there. And there they, wow, they really pop. And um, yeah, so there's that. And then I also tried it against red. You see that? You see, you can really see them shining there so they're pretty cool what are your thoughts on this on these calligraphy on these uh, metallics so i tested them as well and again metallics aren't um something that i use in my everyday practice but i was intrigued by the idea of using them for lettering i was really excited especially this red copper which i used um just a nice fine brush and we can do a little bit of lettering while we're doing our painting today but then I also added it to this just really quick loose flower that I painted as a highlight. So I thought uses would be um, like if I were working on greeting cards, hand painted greeting cards, or even little note tags, uh, I thought the metallics would be really fun to use for that type of effect. And um, again, yeah, for a bit of a highlight, just when you want a bit of sheen, I would say these metallics would be fun to play around with more. Actually, what we have chosen for today to paint, I think it'll be interesting to see how we incorporate the metallics. Yeah, so this is one of the things about Nikki is she is she is so, I love this um, 
lettering with a brush. I do a little tiny bit, but I always defer to the dip pen. So I'm really looking mm -hmm. forward to this week. We're going to be doing, I think we have one day where we're just going to be doing lettering. And mm -hmm. um, today we're, uh, we have another day we're going to be doing colored pencil. Another day we're going to be doing gouache and mm -hmm. another day that we're going to be focusing on watercolor. So each day, different materials. Now, if you don't have metallic watercolors from Windsor Newton, don't worry about it. We're still going to, the idea is really how can we push ourselves? So look around. This is really a great opportunity to get um, your art supplies out and um, yeah. just see if there's anything um, that is gathering dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I find that I, I went through all my bottles of ink and I was like, oh, there's two or three where it's just like some crumbly bits at the bottom of the jar mm -hmm. and I need to replace them or I need to refresh them. So it's an opportunity mm -hmm. this week to just go through your stuff and say, I haven't used this in a really long time or I bought this and I never used it and or I never use it in combination with something else. It's a week of experimentation. You may make some beautiful art. It doesn't really matter if you do or don't this week mm -hmm. because it's a chance to try stuff out. So um, and I would yeah. add to that, Danny, if you're feeling it like you're in a bit of a creative rut, too, um, sometimes just bringing in a new supply. So grab a color that you love already. Green is a, a favorite of mine. Um, and then if, by introducing just even one new tool or supply, then that can spark some ideas as well. And sometimes it's just little tweaks, right? Just to give you a bit of a boost to see if playing with something new will get you out of that creative rut. So it's like, it's like with cooking, like you bring one new spice in or, yeah. you know, one new pan that you've never had before, those kinds of things. And then you, just reshuffles everything because because yeah. so often st the rut that we get into the stagnation is just I know how to do I draw like here's a classic thing I draw only these things yeah you know I only draw cats or I only draw shoes or whatever it is and another thing is I only draw them in a certain way and another one is I only draw them with certain materials and yeah. that isn't to say that you have to go to the art supply store and buy everything that they have there it's really more just introducing a new thing to and all the gears shift and they all you know move in, in a new direction so yeah i love it for sure um let's just talk about it we have a couple more things here that we could talk about so we mentioned the calligraphy inks i mean look at that that's gold yeah that's really nice gold and black and blue and beautiful red again in great combinations and brown i use the brown quite a lot I like yeah i like the brown there. actually yeah mm -hmm. and green Sleepy. i know that you use green a lot green's not a color i use that much so maybe this week is a chance i mean i use it obviously when i'm painting trees or whatever but i don't it's yeah. not a color i think to go to so that's going to be new and different um mm -hmm. and these calligraphy inks you're you use them quite a lot too right they're yeah especially with the dip pen so pretty much exclusively those calligraphy inks with my dip pen again um so i use the the inks on smoother, so hot press paper, I know is something that you use, Danny. Bristol yeah. is really so. great because it accepts the inks really well. It doesn't bleed. Um, and I find that I get a longer flow with them as well. So if you've ever used a dip pen, mm. you're going back into that jar unless you have one of those amazing coils, which um, I don't. I have just a very standard dip pen. Then you, like just the flow of it, I feel like it lasts a little bit longer and I don't have to re-dip as much and the important thing too is it lasts so they will you know last you a very long time if you're yeah. framing or doing them as gifts even um anytime i do quotes with a dip pen yeah calligraphy yeah. ink is the way to go they're, they're really nice ink um we got a bunch of graphite pencils i don't use i don't use pencils that much to draw with but i'm going to this week because they didn't send us any pens I have yeah i'm so about that actually it's good it kind of gets us out of that using black pens i have lots of pens so it's possible that i'll cave later in the week and uh and pull some out but um there's definitely a nice set of pencils here and mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. don't come with erasers so for those of you who uh, know the way i approach drawing i don't make mistakes so it won't be a problem no erasers um what else we have a set of uh just regular cotman watercolors mine is this i have i happen to have this particular set so mine are a little um used but that's okay but i have a new, i have a new set that i i'm hoarding now because they sent it to me and i tried to have you ever tried washing a watercolor set it's not easy 
I have, and it, it's actually painful for me because sometimes you just need to clear clear everything off, right? Because it does get cakey. Mine, I, I actually use the one that they sent me. So that Cotman set is one that I bought when I first started my watercolor journey years and oh, years yeah. ago. So I've refilled it. I've changed the colors. And sometimes you do need a, you know, a really good cleaning just to make sure everything is clean. Even my palettes, I don't like to wash them. It pains me to to see the watercolor, you know, know, go down the drain. So to speak. I did. I did wash um, mine. So, um, what setting on the dishwasher do you use? Oh, not the dishwasher. I'm kidding. No, do not put them in. The <laughs> Danny, no, you're going to make my head explode. <laughs> do not put them in the dishwasher. But you can't. What I did is I just took a wet paper towel and I just kind of cleaned them off. And you know, a lot of times yeah. you you know you, if you're going hastily as I do. You're just smearing one color into the next, but it's a nice solid yeah. block of watercolor, and you can they can take a, a bit of a scrubbing yeah. to, to clean. I just it do again. a tiny bit of a rinse, like I'll even spray it with a spray bottle. I have always a little spray bottle at my desk too, um, and then sometimes the palette part I'll give a bit of a rinse as well, yeah. but because it can right. get a little distracting when all the colors have muddled together. Yeah, yeah, um, and then we also got a set of watercolor pencils. So there's 24 of them here. There's another layer down below and um, beautiful colors. Oh my gosh, there is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, why, did, why is this box so thick? Colors, why... I was like, oh, I don't have any greens to play with. <laughs> yeah, it's oh like, my oh, my house has a basement. Yeah. So excited. Did you, did you swatch them at all? Uh, I've used them in the past, so I didn't exactly. swatch them. Wait, did I swatch them? Maybe I did. Yeah, they're a bit waxy. I haven't tried their watercolor pencils until no. I swatched them. <clears throat> and I like that they're, they've got a little bit of a waxy flow to them. So I feel mm -hmm. like they move really nicely. And then when I activated them with water, I like the pigments as well. So, oh my gosh, could you imagine I, I would have been missing those? I would have used them for five years. <laughs> I love that. So these, um, so if you've never used watercolor pencils, we're gonna we're not gonna really focus on them today, but we are gonna do one day focusing on watercolor pencils and trying stuff mm -hmm. differently. So that is to come, and then there is gouache, which I've already preloaded my palette with, mm -hmm. and this is uh, Winsor Newton gouache. I think is just I have a lot of different gouaches. It's yeah. the one, and this set is um, there's actually a f few here that aren't in the set, but primary yellow, primary red, primary blue. They mix beautifully together. Um, they're just, I mean, look at how bright they are and they're, they're matte. Um, they're just, they're delicious. And beautiful, yeah. Yeah, so I've got those set to go and I think that's it, right? That's all there was. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, and so, the marker. Oh yes, the markers. Um, cool. We're gonna give each other tattoos at the end of the week, right? <laughs> Absolutely, so these are, <laughs> These are pro markers and they are tattoo tones. So they're, they're, they have different sets of these markers, but these are the, the colors that they come in. So they're, yeah, yeah, they're tattooish, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think American traditional, not that I know tattoos, but I'm Yeah, but they're kind of like, yeah, old school, like sailor tattoos. And yeah. each of them is, has, has a fine point and the reverse is a broad. Broad point. You know what I want to demonstrate, Danny, when I was playing around, I'm going to um, go ahead and show you my desk, is that the blender, so there is a blender marker in the set. So here are the pro markers that I swatched. Mm. And I was trying to figure out how I would use the blender that is um, included. And let me even get in a bit closer so you can see. Um, it bled through my watercolor paper. So this is... Um, uh -huh. you know, yeah. That's something we're gonna have to wrestle with because definitely so just keep that in down. mind yeah yeah that if you're using the blender tool it because i think there's a bit of maybe acetone in it or something maybe alcohol right. it um it did make it bleed through so i noticed that afterwards so little yeah, tip I, mean, for I, I generally work on markers only on one side of the page and i often oh. put a, i only i put a protective piece underneath so it doesn't bleed through to the page but behind it so okay. yeah there's there's definitely um some learning some bleed. down there. Okay. Yeah. But it was just when I used the blender, otherwise um, there is a bit of bleed through, but I don't know. I felt like it got a bit wet. So, yeah. All right. We are done. Um, Carol says, why would you use gouache over watercolor and vice versa? 
Well, we're going to get into that, but um, mm -hmm. I think because we're going to do a day about gouache, right? Mm -hmm. So we will we will talk about that more. But in short, the I mean, gouache is opaque. Mm -hmm. So um, when it's opaque, that, yeah. So you can have, you know, you can you can cover over a previous layer. Uh, it's just, you know, it's su it's super opaque, and the colors are really bright, and um, it's a pretty different experience from watercolor. It's, mm -hmm. it is, it is, I think a lot of illustrators use gouache because yeah. it is, you get nice flat colors, mm -hmm. it reproduces really easily. With mm -hmm. watercolor, sometimes the gradations in watercolor can just be harder to reproduce. Mm -hmm. um, but also if you just want to have something that's bold and graphic, mm -hmm. in fact, these sets of gouache are called designer's gouache because, you know, I know, I know quite a number of illustrators who started in the fashion business where they were painting repeat patterns. Like, so they came, they studied textile design in school and they did all that in gouache. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much of that goes on anymore, if it's all done in mm -hmm. you know, Photoshop or Illustrator, but. Yeah. Yeah. The, the difference too that I find, so when I'm describing it, Watercolor, you use it more translucently and you have to paint light to dark. So that sometimes, you know, flips the way that we approach how we paint our the layers within a painting. Um, whereas with gouache, you can work dark to light. So if you wanted to save your lightest, you know, for the very end, because you can layer them, um, the difference is more closer to what you would do, I guess, in an acrylic painting or right. an oil painting. Yeah, and they do, they they dry flat and, and really nice and matte. So if you're scanning your work and things like that, it's a good You can change change. your mind more easily with gouache, I think. You know, yeah, you nice. can make mistakes because you can layer them. You can even water gouache down to make it look and behave like watercolor, um, but it is meant to be used more opaquely. Right, well. and I would also say it is, um, it is, it's, it's, not as um, random as watercolor can be. And that randomness in watercolor where suddenly things are, you know, flowing and doing cool things. I mean, that can be great or it can be annoying. Um, it, so it it's, depends on how controlled you want to be. But you can also combine them. So you can do a watercolor painting and then hit up some details with gouache. Or you can do a gouache portrait and then do a watercolor background. So you can mix them all yeah. up. And that's part of what we're going to do. We're going to do gouache um, later in the week, we're going to really focus on it. I might use a bit of gouache today, but I think we're we're about at the half hour mark. So I think we should get to doing some, making some art today. So here's what, those of you who have done Draw With Me before, which is our Thursday show, usually we put the reference picture up and it's there the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, but we have so many things going on with Nikki and me and our tabletops and all this stuff that we're. I'm just going to do this. Okay, well, first of all, here's our subject. Get chickens. ready. <laughs> so our subject is chickens because, you know, I was thinking this is, um, maybe our message is don't be a chicken. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love that. Right, don't be a chicken. This week we are being brave and bold. Not that, I mean, these chickens do not look like, they don't look chicken. They don't look afraid. They are, um, they are all mean, ornery looking roosters. But we just like the idea of them. And there's... They're kind of bold and, I don't know, they just, they're fun. So what I would suggest you do is, if you want to draw along with us right now, take a screen grab of the, these three pictures. Just take a screen grab because you're probably not, probably not going to have them up on screen after this. So if you know how to do a screen grab, do that, and then you'll have these three pieces of reference. Or don't use reference at all. You don't have to use reference. You can do whatever you want. But you've got these pictures here, and we are going to be looking at them ourselves, but we just don't have enough real estate on the screen to do it, okay? So I'm going to turn it off now and uh, go back to the two of us. Okay. All right, so um, let's – how should we do this? Should Do you want to start, or should I start? I could start, and you could be working in the background, and then yeah, you could come on. Yeah, maybe show you my screen process. Yeah, yeah so if we do it like this uh, – no, if we do it like – my yeah. desk if we do if we do this so this is there's nikki's desk in the corner there's me up in the top and here's my desk and i'm thinking i'm gonna use some this is just mixed media paper um and i have to open that chicken 
open the chicken. And again, I think I think we're going to probably draw different chickens, you and I, right? You were thinking. Yeah, I kind of like the one. I flipped one. There's one that's giving us a little bit of an attitude looking out of that one side of his eye. Um, and I think the metallics, because our goal is to use the metallics today in a creative way. So I think what I'm going to do is roughly draw him out a bit and put down some watercolor first. Um, and just I'll give myself a little bit of room to create and then go in with some metallics to see how that looks. So I like to start my drawings with a pencil. And if you're in my creative space, you know, I don't mind pencil lines showing through my work. I think that it just adds a little bit of depth and value. Um, maybe I'll show you which one that I'm choosing to work with. He's right here on my iPad. So it's this little guy here. And um, I think what I'll do is just start to draw out what I see. So working on observation skills. We're what pencil looking... are you using? Is that the 4B? Good question. I decided on the 4B because yeah. I think it's dark enough for the camera, but right. I can also um, erase it and even smudge it into my work if I choose to with the watercolor. And I like to hold it sort of at the top of the pencil to make sure that I'm not really tight and rigid that I give myself some room um, for a little bit of more expressive lines and shapes. And I'm even holding it at maybe a 40 degree angle to the paper. So not up top, but just let the side of the um, pencil sort of do its thing. And I'm just going to start to draw in some of his the top of his head there and even i like how um, the depth of field makes it look like the top of his little what do you call this top bit i know you'll know the the, the name comb, for the it comb, the co comb. Yeah, i feel like it'll be nice to have this bit washed out a little bit with the watercolor and then again i really like that expressive eye so i'm not even worried about proportions um, i might make his eye a little bit bigger but I think that the eye should be the focus. So my eye is just sort of, if I had my a printed reference, I almost would use my left hand and a finger to kind of guide me and keep me on track. And again, hey, my, I feel while like, you're working, I'm gonna meanwhile start drawing my chicken in the corner. How are so you gonna start? Are you gonna use pencil as well? I think so, yeah, because I it's not my normal thing, so I'm gonna use pencil, whoops. I love that. And again, yeah, pencils, yeah. you know, you can erase them. I know you don't like to do um, the erasing necessarily, but I feel like there's a little bit of, you know, a safety net for me. And so I can see now here, I may need to maybe make some corrections or I might even make it up. Like, I don't know what this little bit on the side is and I may not want to include him you know, every little bit, right? So at least this way I've got a nice light. I'm going to make his eye really bold. So I'm going to make sure I spend a bit more time on drawing that. But drawing doesn't have to be complicated. You can um, add more detail the closer you get to starting to put down color and even values, right? How's your drawing doing, Danny? Looking Good. I'm just down here in the corner. I'm just going to draw. So I might even bring this part of his head up a bit. And then I like that I've got a bit of white space here to the left of him, because if I wanted to add something, you know, that he, you know, might relate to it. So if we wanted to add a quote, or something like that, I think that that's a great opportunity to do so. And again, this part here, I wanna keep it a little bit looser. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna grab my eraser. And do I have one handy? We'll use the one from my knife here. And I think what I'll do is even just get rid of a bit of the back here because maybe I'll use the watercolor in a really washy way because he is um it's a little bit blurry back there so that creates a bit of depth when you do that okay 
Hi, I think I'm ready. Ooh. I'm getting all nervous that I'm doing the proportions all wrong, but. Yeah, whatever. but that's okay. Expressive, right? And I love again how confident and strong your lines are because that becomes part of your painting as well, right? So I'm going to spray my um, Cotman watercolor set and maybe even try to have it off to the side here. So I like to just use a little spray bottle to get them going. And I always say working live in the studio, we've got lights on. So the watercolor is going to dry a little bit more quickly than um, what I'm used to. So I make sure I've got lots of water down. And then looking at the colors in my palette, I kind of want to bring in some warm tones first. I'm going to go in with this yellow. Make sure it's nice and awake. And I think I want the body um, to be really nice and washy. So I'm going to put water down first. And are you going to start with watercolor as well, you think, Danny? I think I'm going to start with gouache, actually, because I want to do um, I want to do some metallics on top of the gouache. So. Oh, that'll be interesting. So I'll do watercolor and use the metallics on top. And if you do gouache, then we can see how um, different they are. Right, exactly. So, okay. oh, you know that we forgot to mention? What's we were that? We talking about all the materials. Brushes. They sent us a few of these synthetic oh, yeah. watercolor brushes. I've been using these for a while now, and at first I was like, ugh, synthetic brushes. But I have to say, that basically, that's the brushes that I use now. You know? Yeah, so it's their professional line, and they're actually sable. So they're synthetic sable. Um, they hold a ton of water, and they do work very similarly to, um, you know, the sable hair that is used in real hair brushes yeah but there's no animals are killed so. no no animals no chickens were harmed <laughs> <laughs> so i've gone in with a really bright yellow because i'm inspired by your use of color and i thought it'd be neat to put in a bit of yellow um, as sort of an under painting i move my guy you know what you might want to do is push the focus button on your uh, IP though. Sure. Just push it in once and it'll. it'll... Good. Yeah. All right, good. Or you could zoom in a bit more. You could just move your camera down so you can see your painting a bit more clearly. Yeah, for those people who are asking about gouache, also, you can see this gouache, I'm not laying it, layering it on super thick so you can see some of my pencil lines underneath but i might go back later on and just um do more so that it'll become it'll completely cover up those lines and you won't see them at all so i'm just mixing some of the colors in the cotman palette to start to get just a little bit um deeper tones to um, accentuate the body so I don't want to paint in all of the feathers. We don't have time in a shorter session. So the way that I cheat that is just adding um, multiple layers of colors in short strokes to show a little bit of texture as I build up the depth. So again, just wetting the paper first. And then at the back, I'm going to try to make it nice and um, faded because I do want to create that little bit of depth. So I'm going to go, I think, lighter at the front. Let me see this red. So it looks like permanent rose, which is a little bit too cool. We'll mix some alizarin 
And one thing about these Cotman palettes, I know it's um, like a student grade, it's not their professional line. They're still really pigmented. Like, look at this dry palette. I just really have sprayed it. And then look at the beautiful pigment that you get. So that's something to think about when you're playing with watercolor. You want the pigment payoff to be really nice and bold so that you can control the intensity using a little bit of water or even lighten it by using a lot of water. Oh, I like your background. Yeah, I was inspired by your talk about green and uh, so there's a little bit of green in the background of the reference, but um, this is, I'm mixing the, the green that comes in the set with primary yellow to get some nice bright color. So I almost want a deeper Make sure everyone can see the top there. So this is really loose. I'm not worrying too much about, you know, my edges being perfect, but I'm, I wanted to create just some depth at the top here of, what did you call it again? His, the, the, the comb. The comb. And if you feel like you've got too much water on your paper, you can just use your brush to remove a bit. I'm just going to fade out the back here because, again, that's where I feel like creating that depth of field so it'll be stronger in the front is the hope. We'll see what happens, though, right? <laughs> the idea. Go. guys let me know when you um, are going to start bringing in some metallics maybe yeah i think i'm just going to let this sit and dry for a second yeah i thought i would let the body dry and maybe bring in some metallic i'm just kind of stippling my brush and i i think that it's doing what um i'm hoping for it to do i'm not going to follow a pattern of the texture on his cone, but I thought it'd be neat to add a little bit with stippling and then maybe even a white gouache to help. All right, so mine is kind of crude because I'm hoping to, this is really just a backdrop to the metallics. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, I don't know how this yellow will work out as a backdrop, but really the red that I wanted to focus on. Oh, look at him. He's so bold. He's saying, don't be chicken. I love that. <laughs> yeah, we have to do a bit of calligraphy along those lines. So, all right. So shall I swap and uh, use, take the other back seat for now? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank so, you. whoops. There's my rotated, let me rotate my chicken rotisserie here. There it is. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to, pop it open the metallics now and see how they play here so not all of this gouache is completely dry but this part is so i can just experiment with that and just see what does it look like and so it's it's a little that so that was just the red i think i'm going to try gold gold color yeah so you can see that you can see it sitting on top of the gouache. The thing about this metallic watercolor is the more you work it, the more you get it nice nice and juicy, the the more it shows up against that background. So But 
but it's really designed to let the red show through. The red is really the base, but... Use it for adding stippling texture. Can't really see. How are you finding it? Is it maybe hard for the camera to pick up as I know, well? I'm just like putting I another light on so you can see it a bit more. Yeah. It is. It's really shiny here, but I don't know if you can see that. bit better maybe we will have to um let her really quickly don't be a chicken just so we can use the metallic on its own yeah i think also i'm going to post a photograph of this afterwards where you'll be able to see it perhaps better than you can on the camera because it really does look very bright here in the studio at least I wonder if you could mix it with, with gouache, what that would be like. Or actually mix it directly into your paint mix, maybe, and see if it'll add a little bit of sheen. I'm almost there. I just want to get the um, rest of yeah. the base of my guy. See it there. Now you can see that it's really shiny and metallic. Oh, yeah. And which one did you use? The gold? The yellow gold? Yeah, the yellow gold. I think that's the question about this metallic is like, is it, does it feel craftsy or is there like a really proper way to use it so that it, it, you know, it can work with any kind of a painting. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just feel like embellishment. Mm -hmm. I use gold leaf when I'm working with acrylic. So maybe um, we use it as an embellishment when the piece is more dry. That might be, that might be the answer. Yeah. I'm going to try using some silver now because he has a lot of these like little kind of um, you can see the silver at least on camera looks like it's standing out a lot more but it really mm, the has, silver is maybe because it's contrasted yeah okay, I just want to add a bit more red to the top and I think I'm pulling out my metallics how are we for time Danny you know, we're, um, it's 1048, so okay. they're not going to kick us off the air if we keep going. <laughs> today was, today moved a bit more slowly because we did go through it, introducing all these different materials, but I'm also wondering if um, it would work even better on an even darker background than this red, like if how it would be on black. Okay, my little underpainting is done with the watercolor. Okay, I'm going to swap back to you. Okay, I'm going to move over to the metallic. So there's my guy. Let me zoom out a tiny bit so you can see. So yeah, just I wanted to lay down a little bit of color and maybe some depth. And I'm going to introduce some metallic and see how it goes. And I really loved this. Um, it's called Copper Red, so I did swatch them. And, and again, if you don't swatch your um, palettes, your colors, whatever you're using, whether they're paint or marker, it's just a really good opportunity. I call it, you know, that's the courtship. That's how you get to know each other. And um, you get to see what the colors look like on whatever substrate you're working on, whether you're working on a mixed media paper or I'm using Windsor Newton's um, cotton cold press watercolor paper, which I love. So let me look at the body here. So I'm going to start underneath and I'm using the same round brush. So what number is this? Number six. And I'm just, you know, they I'm sent just... us these really tiny brushes, a couple of them like this is a, uh, and I, you know, at first I was like, what am I going to do with that? But this is a zero. And actually, I'm like really glad to have it actually to do this little part of the eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll use that one for lettering too. And I'm even going to use the metallic dry to see. So I'm kind of dry brushing for a bit of texture 
um, in the body. Again, if you're working on birds, it's a great way to paint in some feather effects. So my brush is a little bit wet, but my paint um, puddle, move it over here so you can see, doesn't have a lot of movement, so it's quite dry. And I may even pick up a bit of that black, it's called iridescent black, and I can push some shadow underneath. So maybe the metallic isn't, is more subtle. So it wouldn't be like that gold calligraphy ink that you shared. So maybe the metallic is more of an understated um, embellishment to your painting. Yeah, I'm feeling like, I'm, like it's really a bit gaudy what I'm doing. It's not, I like doing things that are bright and bold, but this is feeling like I'm, I don't really have a full reason for doing it the way I'm doing it. So I, besides just tr wanting to experiment with this material. So that's something to think about, which is, you know, yes, it's cool, but what's the really meaningful way to use it? Yeah, and are you happy with the results, right? Yeah, I think I'm not happy with the results yet because I just, it's new to me to be, I mean, that's part of the problem with experimentation is you have to kind of get used to the effect. Mm -hmm. when it's yeah, really, this is when the it's first really time. Out, yeah, because it's really like, it's outside of your normal, your normal habits, so you go, ooh, mm. what the hell's that? And what I might even do is add it to my brown tone because I'm looking there, it's almost like this glow of an orange um, in my rooster's reference photo. So I thought, maybe I'll zoom out so you can see what I'm thinking. So I'm inspired. So I have my watercolor palette here, and I'm going to use some of this gold from the metallic palette. And I'm just waking it up, so just rubbing the side of my brush in that gold, maybe add a bit more water to it, and I'll add it to my watercolor puddle and see what that does. This is probably the way I use gouache the most, which is to use gouache to put a highlight in and an oh, eye. Your eye and looks- totally, like totally makes the eye come alive. Mm -hmm. But boy, the camera is uh, is not my friend today because the there's subtleties in this that you don't necessarily necessarily see camera so something to bear in mind just trust me it's awesome all right people <laughs> it does look awesome this is one of those kind of paintings where you can just kind of go to town with little textures and designs and putting you know all kinds of little stuff into his comb and into his it's called a wattle and uh you know just like make that it the other bit here yeah just the, the the yeah the kind of like the beard sort of thing if you will and you can just keep adding different sort of decorations really and make it so i start out with a, like a pretty basic sort of drawing but as you put more and more stuff on it it becomes more interesting Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like this guy, if we, um, you know, spent time layering, let the layers dry, and then right. that would add in a little bit more. I think the thing we should be thinking about as we're doing this experiment this week is, what, do, what did you do today that you've never done before? Or, you know, did you do something differently than you normally would do? I think that that's part of our goal here, right? I like that, a bit of a debrief recap yeah okay i think time for a bit of black around his eye so i'm going to pick up the liner brush as well you might also find that these water these metallic watercolors come into play later in the week if we suddenly go you know what would be great right here is one of those things so 
Yeah, that's something to bear in mind too. The experiment will continue throughout mm -hmm. the week. I think like you, I've got them all out. So if I'm inspired, maybe, because I'm even thinking a bit of watercolor pencil for just a bit of accent might be nice when it's dry. Oh, my brush wasn't dry. That's the thing is also, you know, for years I didn't even have a studio. I just kind of, I usually had like a bag that had some art supplies thrown into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the nice thing about having a place where you can put your stuff out, even if it's just, you know, you know, you might just have a, a board that you can put away in a closet. Um, mm -hmm. but ha the more, the more you have a variety of art supplies available to you, you know, you know, the more you think to use them and that's how you come up with new and interesting effects as opposed to, you know, thinking, Oh, I should use those metallic watercolors. Let me go and find them. You know, if you have them sitting around, you might say, Hey, what if I threw some metallic watercolor here? And that could make all the difference. So that's a good tip. And especially since we're so busy, sometimes if we're spending our creative time setting up, we are not spending it on being creative and painting. That's true. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a bit of whitewash too. Because a lot of times you can say, I don't feel like drawing or painting because I just can't be bothered to set all the stuff up. Yeah. You know, whereas if you have yeah, it, you just, and you just sit down and you get to work. Painting. And you also don't have to finish everything at, a single session, you know, so you can kind of sit back down to it and get back to work on a thing that you started before. So that's mm -hmm. something you might want to do also. I mean, I find that I do that with writing a lot, you know, I, I write basically every day, but if I have something that's partially written, it's so much easier to sit down and get to work because I'm, I don't have to start from start cold. So good. All right. Well, I feel like we could spend the whole day doing this and we probably should. I know. I was just thinking, where do I spend time? Because I feel like he has so much texture because I'm looking at the cone and I'm looking at the feathers and I'm looking at the screen to see what I've painted. And he still feels like he, you know, needs a bit more love. He needs a bit more attention and I'll continue to work on him. Maybe we'll even work on the piece if we don't feel like it's completely finished. If we have time and we can share it the next day. Yeah, that's a good that. idea. Come back and say, yeah. here's what I did since yesterday. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's, um, why don't we, I'm going to see if I can set up a split screen where we are. Um, we can show our thing full up on, this, on the same page, right? So let me put you up here. And then let me. He needs a name. I might name him by tomorrow. <laughs> Metallica. <laughs> Don't be chicken by Metallica. Dropping soon. <laughs> it's true. All right. My upside down chicken again. All right. So. Look at how different they look. Love it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I'm going to move yours over. I feel like because the eye is so expressive in the reference photo, mm -hmm. I need to work on my eye. I'm going to do that to show you what it'll look like tomorrow. All right, there are there are chickens next to each other. Sort of interesting. Still working away. I can't stop. Have a look at the screen, <laughs> and you can see our two chickens. <laughs> what? And that was what? Fifteen minutes? How uh, long? Twenty tw minutes? About twenty minutes. Twenty twenty-five minutes. So. Oh, thanks, yeah. Maxine. So they're spectacular. Oh, thanks, Maxine. I love that we can see the chat too. They are fun. Bog, yeah. like corn is a great choice. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So let me just move me over here. And then I have you over. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick lettering. I'm inspired. You are? Don't be okay. Chicken. Yeah. You can chat and I'm going to do a quick, don't be chicken with my, um, 
Is it number zero, I think it is. What are you going to do with a brush? Yeah, I'm going to do a brush and this lovely red copper that I am, I think is going to be my new love. And I'm going to say, don't be chicken. I think that's going to be the theme of the week, Danny. Anti chicken. Don't. All right, so um, brushes, they gave us um, all synthetic sables, and they are all round. They're, we got a zero, and we got a one, which are both very, very delicate brushes. Um, see if I can show you, you know, one thing about lettering is sometimes because I'm thinking of the flow of the letter, I misspell words, so if I do misspell words. I know, I'm words. the same way. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to do mine with, with, I'm going to try it with the ink. That's a good idea. Don't be chicken. Did you get a flat brush in your kit, Danny? I got a, um, I did, I got a, a number 13 half inch, which is this one right okay. here I'm showing on screen. Yeah, it's a 13 number it doesn't have a number don't be chicken but it's called a one stroke yeah there is a hashtag john's asking if there's a hashtag there it's, is um, uh, we showed it at the beginning we'll show it to you in a second hang on there oh, look at that. beautiful don't Oh, interesting how you formed your, oh, I love it, love it. Ooh, this gouache is a bit thick. That green background is beautiful too. That's what I admire about your, um, I think, pieces the most is just how striking your use of color is. I, I'm more subdued and you can see that even side by side, right? I like um, more subdued, moody um, paintings, but I admire nice, bold use of color, which I think is really neat to see. I would oh, we've inspired for Tina's three-year-old. Oh, tell him I think he's the coolest. He's painting along with us. Yay! Look at that right. stylized lettering. Love it! Okay, so there we have it. Let's go back to our side-by-sides. Um, yeah. So there's my lettering. Um, yeah, you, you, the thing we have to figure out with this is I don't get to watch you because I'm drawing, so I'm going to have to take breaks. And, and <laughs> I was able to look up a few times. Yeah. Maybe we tag team. Maybe tomorrow we can do you know five minutes each, and then that way we can sit and enjoy each other's. I like that idea. Yeah, because I feel like I'm, I want to learn from what you're doing, and I don't necessarily have the chance yeah. to. So, yeah. All right, good. Let's go back full on. I'll be with you in one moment. Oh, there we go. All right. Making a mess. Good. Here. So I think this was this is a, a great start. I think I made something that looks um, probably different than I would normally do. But I think again, I'd like I would like the opportunity to engage with two of us and also to maybe look at what's going on with the with the chat because we do have a chance to do that so so tomorrow we'll try and maybe be a little less ambitious and okay. uh and and sort of focus on learning more but i thought it was great today and really fun and we just have so many things here to play with it's really cool yeah and it's what to do next i like that and should we maybe um give them a sneak peek for what to expect tomorrow or we yes oh, let me also put up the url here so again um here we oh, go um so so again, Windsor Newton and uh, hashtag Art Kickstart 2024. Looked, tried to find a unique um, hashtag. It was kind of hard actually. So, but Art Kickstart 2024, supposedly nobody else is using. So, if you I made a chicken it. today or anything else that you made and you want to uh, post it, we would love to see it. And then probably next week we'll maybe put together a little video where we show all the different things that people made. Or, I don't know, maybe if we have time, we'll try and show some stuff tomorrow as we yeah. 
as we move along. Um, and remember, yes. you can watch the um, recording. So for those of you who maybe couldn't follow along or want to see the process a bit more is I think the recording is, you know, watch it again and um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because there was a, yeah. we did a lot. We did a lot. Uh, I got a lot of stuff in here. Um, uh, Lisa says Nikki definitely has a Yay. new fan here. That's Thanks, great. Lisa. That's good. Um, Amazing. Yes. So, and uh, what else? We have Canner saying learning curve on so many levels. It's true. We're trying we'll try to learn how to do these experiments, <laughs> how to use these materials, how to use this technology, and also how to work, make this format work. If you have any yeah. thoughts or any comments and you're like, you know what, I'm sick of hearing Danny Jabber or why can't I see more of Nikki's, I don't know, pens, let us know and we will try and address it. We'll look at the, all these comments after yeah. we finish on the air today. So we'll be even more prepared. But what's fun about this is we're going to go every day this week. So each day we will build on other stuff. But if if uh, you come in the middle of the week or you miss a, a thing, don't worry about it. It's all it's all. Um, good and it'll be a lot of fun too. So, all right, yeah, scale so model muse that. has subbed to Nikki as well. No, good. So, thank so you. yeah, it's nice. This it's nice speaking. Yeah, go ahead. Where the recording is. So the recording is um, here. Can... This is the recording. Yeah. yeah. So so this is the nature of YouTube. Is what we're doing now is being recorded. When we're done streaming, it will just be here, and you can come back and look at this exact thing again. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, yes, as JJ says, please subscribe to both channels, please. Um, and then you will be able to know because, you know, we both we are both fans of drawing, but we're also fans of teaching and of having communities engage in what we're doing. Because, you know, when you have a community, it just makes it so much easier and more fun to make art because you have... You know, and a lot of times we're like embarrassed or ashamed. I don't know if I want to show it. As you can show see, it. we're we're just doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, so yes, good. Uh, Caroline asked, same time tomorrow. Yes, same time every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, at nine a.m. Pacific, right here. So just come to our channels, whichever ones you, you sub subscribe to, you'll probably get a notification. One thing I think a lot of people don't know is if you subscribe, when there's the thing that says subscribed. If you click on it, there's a little bell thing that you can click. And if you do the bell, it will send you a notification that we're on. So that's a good kind of way of making sure you are reminded and you also know where to come. All right. Uh, J. Rowe says, love this community of like-minded people. And Gina says, community has stretched my art. So yes. Yeah. And John says, my chicken scares me. So... <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that was really fun, and we are gonna we're gonna end now, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. See, same, same time, same place. Same time, same place. Different chicken. This uh, was fun. Thank you, Danny. Bye bye. <laughs>